Welcome to 10X Tech Tank. Jared Yellen here. And listen, we got two Jareds on the set. We got OD and we got ED. This is Jared Glant, OD, president ED, like of that. Cardone Trading Technologies. And this dude was in the room when I said, Grant, you know that real estate thing? It's kind of cute, but tech is sexy. When, when I shared that, what was the first thing that showed up for you? Ah, it's the truth. You know, like uh, the, there's... You know, real estate is a stable, steady, you know, you earn your cash flow 10%, 12%, 15% if you're cranking. But, you know, you know, $10,000 becomes 80 million. Yeah, that only yeah. happens in tech. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously companies that, that create products and services that support companies, which is what tech products ultimately end up doing, consumers and businesses. You see what Joe Montana uh, recently did? What did he Put do? 100 grand into a company, $140 million later. Shut yeah, up. 100 grand what into company? a company. GitLab, right? It was GitLab? Yeah, that was GitLab yeah, for was Joe GitLab. Montana. Wow. Yeah, 100 yeah grand. dude, like, I don't know, it's just exciting, you know? It's, it's like it's like winning the freaking lotto, you yeah. know? Like, you know, lotto's 500 million. You're like, what are the chances you win? I don't know, but I'm buying a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> if I win, this is gonna be a life changer. Life changing, yeah. And so I love what we're doing because it's, it's helping people who would normally have ideas that would die because they don't know. You know, think about this. Most of the people that have experience, like people that are 40, 50, they didn't grow up with tech. Like I'm oh, 38 yeah. years old, I did not grow up with tech. And so when you have somebody that's got experience in a space and they know what problems uh, need to be solved and where there's inefficiencies, you get that through experience. Totally. Unless you're some freakish savant and you're like, oh, I'm gonna create a social media about pictures and go sell it for a billion dollars. Yeah. Like, and some of that's luck, right place, right time. But listen, we got Eric Nowalski here. Eric is our VP of growth at 10X Incubator. One of the things that Eric has done so well is he accelerates napkins. He literally turns napkins into gold, he turns napkins into cash flowing company. So Eric, what's one of the things that you look for when somebody's pitching you? Because was, we're really intentional, and we have four people pitching us today, four people that have napkins that they really believe in, and we want to say yes. Like we come in with a desire to say yes, but we're looking for certain characteristics of the person and the idea and the market and the business model. What do you look for with regard to a company that can cash flow? Exactly, so thanks Jared for that. But what we're looking for specifically are companies that have a clearly identified problem. So many people come out with these, these CISPs, these solutions in search of problems. And we don't want to hear about that. You just make that up? I got it from Y Combinator, oh, but uh, you I know, like that. I like that. CISP. So it's a solution in search of a problem. And anytime I hear an idea and it sounds a little wonky, I ask them, how'd you come up with this? And then they say, oh, I just wanted to build a tech company. They didn't clearly identify a problem first. Now, I prefer if this problem is something that you experience or it's something that someone in your first degree of connections is experiencing as well. Because when you experience the problem, it's much easier for you to come up with the solution. But that's what, we're, what I really search for, is ensuring that we have a clearly identified problem. Because if I don't have a clearly identified problem, you know we're gonna be doing massive sales outreach, we're gonna be doing automation, we're gonna be doing integrations, and things are gonna go outbound like crazy. Yeah. But what problem am I gonna be poking that bear with and getting people to download our app, go to our website, or start using our tool? If we don't have that problem, I don't have a message. And that's what I'm specifically looking I for I think today. there was a guy, he once said, the only reason why people buy anything is to solve a problem. Yep, ah, exactly. That was Grant Cardone. Oh. <laughs> no, awesome, awesome. So listen, as you're watching this, I want you to be looking for that. As you're watching these four change makers, these entrepreneurs that had the courage to show up today to present their big idea. What if this is their moment? What if this is their moment when somebody sees the right person with the right idea and the right market and the right business model, but we need your help. As you're watching this in the comments, if you see someone that has something that you know that you would use, Make sure that you get loud. Chirp, celebrate them. All right, let's get this show started. Well, and, and also, if you think it's terrible, say Same it's thing. terrible. Yeah, yeah, let us know. <laughs> and they should know too, right? Because one of the things that we stand for is we want to create predictability to build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. What we don't want to do is have anyone go on a journey that's not going to lead to that outcome. We don't want people suffering. The tech industry, it's grueling, it's painful, it's really uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be. With the right team, and the right problem that's being solved with the right solution, you can really build a pretty epic journey for yourself in a life. So who's up first? Let's bring up one of our first uh, change maker entrepreneurs. Tiffany, please bring somebody up. We got Kyle Steele in the house. Kyle, where are you calling in from? Cedar Rapids, Iowa, the jewel of the Midwest. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Cedar Rapids. Awesome, man. All right, Kyle, you got six minutes. You can share your screen. You can show that, that beautiful 
thing behind you. If that's a, it's a dry erase board behind you, that's awesome. Love that. And uh, take it away, my friend. We want to hear your big idea. Absolutely. That's where generally most of my great ideas come from. And Eric, really quick, I want to say I think he got hosed on the best dress last week. So this week, oh, that look at definitely, that. definitely. Let's get the next person on here. Let's get the next person on here. Absolutely. No slideshow needed. Nothing, nothing like that today. What I want to talk to you about is renter protectors. Now, when I was director of marketing for a large real estate firm here in the Midwest, uh, we know that Facebook, Google, uh, a lot of the big tech companies are restricting our access to their audience or restricting the targeting capabilities within their audience. So I started racking my brain on ways that we can generate leads within the real estate industry. And really, that's where Runner Protectors comes from today. Now, I know you have a very good connection with one of the largest real estate uh, you know, giants, if we will. So, uh, so I thought this might be a very good idea to, to bring to your attention. Runner protectors, simply put, there's nobody out there today who's truly protecting the renter, uh, you know, when you're renting an apartment, a house. You go in, you take a lot of pictures with your phone of things that are wrong, maybe you document it. If you have a wife or, or a girlfriend, she probably puts the lease agreement somewhere. But as a lot of the friends of, of my boys can attest, they don't have anywhere where they're putting that lease agreement. So renter protector on one side of it would be a free service for renters. So they can upload any problems. They could upload their lease. We could scan the lease for things like how much notice do you have to give? What is the property management company responsible for? There's a lot of things you can upload, monthly rent amount, right? That's good, and we'll get to that in just a second. So they're uploading all these data points, and while they're a, a customer of Runner Protector, there's things that we could offer them and partner with Runner, uh, you know, Runner Insurance firms. We could partner with restaurants nearby, uh, their, their apartment complex, carpenters, electricians. There's a whole slew of services that we could offer them via text message or if it eventually evolves into an app, but the minimal viable product would just be basically an online portal, an online website. So we could text message certain offers and charge for that service. Of course, we want them to opt in to allowing us to, to offering those services. Now, here's where it gets really good. With the restrictions and targeting, and I come from a, a very heavy digital marketing background, we all know that Facebook, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, they're really restricting the targeting because the tech giants have gotten ethical or most likely uh, Congress has kind of gotten onto them a little bit so they have to clean up their act for, for a public service. What we would be able to do is now we have that their lease agreement, they're paying $12.50 a month in rent, they're in this area, we send them a simple text message. Are you happy with your current agreement? Are you happy with your place? Or would you like to look at more rental properties or possibly learn about owning a home in your area? That's where it gets good. That's where we can say, because we know how much they're paying in rent. We know exactly where they live. Do you want to live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, or would you rather live in Malibu, California? That's a no brainer, gents. Cedar Rapids, Iowa, right? And so anyway, <laughs> you go down the path and now all of a sudden we can introduce them in the app itself or in the, the actual runner protector website itself, there's a lot of things on the front end that we can offer them. On the back end, we can offer also a community. So if there's a large account apartment complex, people can log on to see and get questions answered from real uh, tenants who are there currently on what are the facilities like? What's the management like? How well do they keep up on the lease agreement? But really where this comes in is it's a very, it's a very plush and fertile funnel for for realtors to be able to really go after that first time home buyer or not even first time home buyer. A lot of people move because of their job. After six months, they realize that I really like living in Portland, Oregon. I'd like to live here permanently, and they buy a home, or maybe they'd like to get into real estate investing. I think you three gentlemen have some connections on that front as well. So there's a whole slew of services and it's a very passive way to get out in front of the customer on their terms because nobody likes to really be targeted all the time. And I'm sure they get, you know, this is a very, this is a, a very yeah, organic one more minute, way. Kyle, one, more, one more minute. Great job, man. Keep going. One more minute. Okay. Yep. And so that is runner protector, literally an idea that I came up with as director of marketing for Berkshire Hathaway here in the Midwest. 
it's a very fertile ground for for realtors but also for renter insurance for for the hospitality industry to get back out in front of them carpenters electricians it's another lead source for a lot of different avenues and all we're asking is for them to upload their information and then tell us yes this is a service that i would like to to have you uh teach me more about my son's friends i call them the wolf pack they're all in their early 20s they don't have a whole lot of education around owning a home real estate investing or any of the other services that i mentioned Turn it back awesome. to you three good-looking gents. Kyle, See what great stuff, you man. Have. All right, we're solving a problem here, Eric. What are your thoughts? Uh, so, you know what? I actually question that because it sounds like you're solving a problem, but we have to put it in two places, right? Because if what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using the data that you're collecting in order to retarget people and have them upsell into a different area out of where they're living right now, I don't really see you going to market through the, the development or through the property management firm that the people are no. currently living in. And so now these people are going to have to double enter their information. They're going to have to double enter the problems in their current real estate um, portal, and then they're going to have to double enter them on the other side as well. So Kyle, how are you going to get people onboarding on both of these products and not just for protecting themselves, right? Because how is this 10 times better or 10x better than what somebody could currently do right now, which is just take a picture and make a file on their phone? Why would they use this? Yep. Because when your iPhone says that I'm out of storage, most of the time you go in and delete those pictures. A lot of the times nobody reads through that lease agreement, so they don't know from a legal aspect how many days notice, what their responsibility is, how to correctly arbitrate if, if there's a hole in the wall that the property management company is saying should have been there earlier as well. Now, it's not asking for a whole lot of information. It's scanning in your lease agreement and asking for your monthly rent, your deposit, and where you live in the name of the property management apartment or duplex area that, that you live, right? So currently, right now, what we're competing against is them putting it on their phone. They select those pictures, they upload it, and away we go. So it's not really entering a whole lot of double information. And the property management company is there for the property management company's protection, not for the renter's protection. There's really no independent source out there to store this information, to have it other than your phone, Dropbox, Google Drive, which the majority of people that I have questioned put it on their phone. And that leaves you very, very susceptible to losing that information. OD, what are you thinking, man? Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, for me, the problem that you started out with, what, with, with getting a, a lease stored somewhere, a lease agreement stored somewhere, to me, that didn't seem like a compelling enough reason to get me to go. Like usually, I'm passing that information back and forth with a realtor. I've rented uh, for the last nine years, and I'm sending emails, I'm scanning it in, it's coming back into my email, and then on my desktop, I just have a folder that says, you know, Jared House Collins Avenue or wherever, and everything that related to that house goes in there. I do think that there is there's something to be said about being the keeper of that data and providing an opportunity for realtors to get lists or leads. Um, I think there's an opportunity to lean into the renter protectors thing because I didn't really, I, I heard the name and I was like, oh wow, that's catchy. But I didn't really feel like there was a big revelation or, or big, big new thing that was solved. And so maybe if it was like, you know, hey, if this, then that. If you have this problem, then do this. Or, or based on the lease agreement, there was some type of automated, there was some brain or AI in the, the, the software that knew the regulations for renter, renters in each state. And not necessarily legal advice, but like if you're having problems as a renter, it tells you where to go. Um, you know, I know that my landlord in one of the places I was at, he bought a service agreement. And in that service agreement, when stuff went wrong, I didn't have to call him. He bought a service agreement and then I just called the service company and then they came out and fixed the deal. So I think that there's some interesting potential on the renter side. And then I think obviously from a list leads perspective, there's, there's value there. I just don't know if that front end is, is sexy enough to get me to, to change the way that I've been doing things for a while. Like I think there needs to be something much much more exciting, much more juicy, and much more beneficial to even initiate this whole process in the first place. Yeah, I, I happen to agree, but I'm curious, what is the financial model? How do you see this becoming financially viable? 
Yeah. And so with that, you know, and really quick, just to address that, like I'm trying to hit the key points within five minutes. So having legal advice, having, you know, service agreements, all those things are, are certainly possible within the website as well. Right. And so having all of that for the runner's protection, right. I, I try to come at this as what's in it for the renter and then what's in it from a lead generation. So the financial model would be this. If you own the audience, you truly can monetize that audience. Facebook, everybody else has proved that to us. And so if we have the audience of renters, now we can go at them and we can monetize either, you know, through push notifications, if it does become an app and, and manifest itself, text message marketing is still a very viable option in the world, right? And so uh, charging on a per text basis to that audience within that respective jurisdiction, and if that's coast to coast, you can monetize that. So when it comes to a financial model, monetizing through lead generation, uh, we can also take the data and aggregate it so that, you know, we can advertise towards large audience as well and then bring the leads um, for sign up for classes, real estate investing, other things like that. So it would be the, the audience is truly going to be what, what uh, we monetize and how we grow the business, right? As you grow your subscribers, you can grow that model as well. Awesome. Kyle, we appreciate you. In the chat, let us know. What do you think about Kyle? Should we have Kyle move through the process with us? Is this something that you would use or is this something that you don't believe is innovative enough? We've, we've, had, we've had all different views here, right? Like, like Eric yeah. challenging certain theses, Jared challenging. I'm a little concerned about the financial model. Like that's one of the most common responses is like once there's an audience, there's all different ways to monetize. What we really look for are precise financial plans. We're going yep. to innovate. We're going to iterate over the course of time. Kyle, thank you so much for showing up today. We appreciate you, man. I know it's not easy to be in a five-minute session like this. You did awesome. In the chat, let us know. What do you think of the idea? Would you use this idea? Does this solve a problem for you? Jared, let's talk back that time. When I came to the office, Grant's sitting here, and uh, we had the operating agreement. It was a big moment, right? Eric was there. A lot of our team was present. And uh, he looked at me. He goes, you think this is going to be big? And I'm like, dude, it's going to be the biggest thing you've ever done. And you could see in his eyes, like there was like this youth, this excitement. Like, listen, his original, his soulmate in business is real estate. Yeah. But this new thing, this tech thing, with regard to his desire for impact, like force for good, reaching billions of people from around the world, it lit his fire. Let's have everybody take a look at that moment. We have a short little video for you. Take a look at Grant Cardone signing the operating agreement with me for 10X Incubator. Because listen, if we say yes to you, that means you're joining 10X Incubator with us. You're gonna have a moment just like that. Johnny, take it away. So you think this is the biggest thing I'm gonna do in my career? Listen, huh? I know it's the biggest thing you're doing. Well, let's do it. Listen. That's all I need to know. What I wanna do for these companies that I know they're suffering from is the promotion. Yeah. Go to markets, everything. Right? Yeah. I mean, you're the master of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just going to blow up these. If, if the embers are hot, I'm going to turn them into flames, baby. Oh, I'm going to turn right. it into a damn bonfire. What could I, what could I fund right now? Yeah, right. These are people's visions. You yeah. got to do it right. You got to build it right, scale it fast. And let's call it 10X Incubator. Cool. We're looking for your ideas. All right, welcome back. What do you think of that moment, right? It was, it was inspiring, it was fun. And for Grant too, it was so meaningful. Like Grant obviously knows the tech industry has limitless potential. Yeah, and it's just not his thing. And, but when he meets, you know, the thing that I know that he likes most about you is that you think big. Yeah. And, and so there's too many people that come in with great ideas that just don't think big enough. And it will never be exciting if it's not big enough. Yeah. And so I think for him where he's at, he wants to be, no, I don't know if he's fully, we, we know we yeah, still got some work yeah, to do with yeah, him yeah. to get him put some on, W's on the board. full on to the, full yeah. on to the, uh, to the, to the mission here. Um, but he, he knows that you're starting in the right place, which is big thing. 10,000 tech companies in the next 10 years. And that's something that gets his attention. So, yeah. you know, it's like, Hey, you're thinking at the right level. I know we have the opportunity to support these businesses how they need it most, which is through promotion yep. and through elevation and through status and through getting people out of obscurity and making strategic connections with 13 million people who yeah. love everything that we do. Um, it's, it's, it's just a matter of getting, getting those opportunities in front of us, vetting them out like we're doing right here, finding yep. great people, finding great ideas that solve problems 
and um, and then putting to work this machine that we've created. And yeah. so that's awesome. um, he all knows right, all the it. all the ingredients are there. I think that's why he's excited. You know? Yeah, I love it. absolutely. I love it. So let's bring up our next guest. As our next guest is coming up, here's an opportunity for all of you to learn. If you want to become memorable for the right reasons, there's there's three steps. Declare your moonshot. Declare it. And when you declare it, don't feel silly about it. Build, scale, sell. 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. The next step is take action like a crazy person, where people are like, they, they must be crazy. They're crazy or they're onto something. And then the third step is to talk about it a ton. That is why we've attracted so much attention and so much opportunity here at 10X Incubator. So when you're showing up, we're looking for that within you. All right, who's up next right now? We have Steve Farina. Steve Farina, where are you calling in from? Madison, Wisconsin. What is up, Madison. Steve? What's up, Steve? Steve Madison, was at Wisconsin. Business Boot Camp. He's coming to play. What is oh, up, nice, bro? Good nice, to see nice. you. Good to see you. All right, man, you got six minutes. Sell us on you as the right person, your idea as the right idea, the right market, and the right business model. Take it away, my friend. You bet. I'm going to uh, attempt to share my screen here for a second, if I can. Go for it. Please. And Jared, I can see uh, you haven't gotten your stays installed yet. What's going I know, on? There? I need to get that in there. Listen, I, I heard you were on here. I got, I got all insecure. I'm like, we move them to the next week so I can get my, my shirt all tight. Your collar stays? He, he's got, he's, you put them in the shirt. You bring it to the dry cleaner and it keeps it perfect. He's got yeah, a see, see, Otherwise, you get wings like I normally wear, yeah, but I don't yeah, have yeah. so I got to fly away. <laughs> you know? All right, take it away, man. All right, once, there we go. There's, there's our picture from. Uh, we don't see your screen. We don't see your screen. Piece. There you go. There it is. Yeah. Man, there, there we, we go. go. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate the opportunity here. Yeah. Just the same. Um, so, at a high level, I own a company. Uh, this is my parent company. It's called Farina X. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Yeah. yeah you're clear. Yep. Okay. Uh, I own a parent company called Farina X. This is nothing more than my parent company that we use to strategically connect creators and business owners to everyday users and kind of link the two of them. Uh, what I'm pitching to you today is uh, a platform that I think can truly have one of the biggest impacts on the creator economy ever. Uh, the fact is the block blockchain is set to change the world dramatically. And my objective is to kind of create that digital bridge between the everyday person and the very people that they want access to like Grant Cardone. Uh, you know, and over the next five to 10 years, in my opinion, every creator should have, have some sort of NFT experience as a part of their brand strategy. Uh, I, I truly see NFTs as like the new innovation in marketing and earning potential. And we did talk about this a little bit at, uh, at uh, Growth or uh, Bootcamp. But, you know, the irony of this is back in April of 2020 when COVID was just hitting, this was a post I made to Instagram. And I was honestly quite skeptical of the world and seeing all the negativity people were putting out there. And I, I, I couldn't help but look back and say, man, if you're not taking advantage of this opportunity to capitalize on what's happening right now, you're really missing out. And what, what's, what's really surprised me in this is what people have taken action to do. And if uh, you might have heard this term, maybe you haven't, my wife actually, actually brought this to my attention, but they coined the phrase, the great resignation, 17.9 million people quit their jobs from January to May of 2021. And they're quitting for a variety of reasons, many of which like we've already explored in our lives, why we've become entrepreneurs, why we've become you know, tech founders and other things uh, like that. But What's even more startling to me is that the explosion in the amount of small business startups across America. Uh, the number of applications have just almost doubled, if not tripled, and the gig economy is also just continues to explode as people explore new avenues for growth. At the same time, uh, students' preferences for online courses are changing. This feeds really well into the whole Cardone strategy of educating people online. Uh, through Cardone University, things of that nature. And if that's not enough, kids, when they're pulled what they want to be when they grow up, they want to be creators. They want to be YouTubers and bloggers and vloggers and musicians and all of these other things that that uh, is just totally like 
different than what we were accustomed to growing up when we want said we wanted to be astronauts and firefighters like and things. Like, this has become together. the new economy it's growing rapidly and so for existing creators with established communities like Grant Cardone uh, and an engaged following or fan base this, this just presents to me a massive and immediate opportunity to earn more with the existing IP the existing courses, the existing experiences, and the other assets that they have. Their community members, their fans, and this rapidly growing market of new creators is eager to learn, they're eager to connect, and they're frankly willing to invest in the people that can help them level up their skill sets and achieve their goals. I saw it firsthand at the 10X Bootcamp, people just throwing money at grants to have dinner with them, to have lunch with them, to have like these immersive experiences with them. And this can all be done with an NFT strategy. And the reality is the market is just getting started. Like Coinbase is the number one uh, crypto platform in America. OpenSea is the biggest NFT marketplace in America. And you can see the difference between the number of users on each platform. So that's why um, you know, you might have heard the term or the phrase being thrown around that the biggest transfer of wealth is happening in America right now. And that's really why, uh, you know, with your help, I, I think we can build one of the most impactful digital bridges between this everyday person and these people that they want access to. So and, and, and doing so, we can provide the tools for every creator, big or small, whether you're Grant Cardone or just a local musician trying to make it. Um, yeah, and 60 seconds, you know, Steve. Frankly, 60 seconds. Okay. Creators are exploring, exploring the market. They're buying some, they're trading some, they're even investing in certain projects. But the ones that are future proofing their businesses right now are providing access to their platforms with NFTs. The, the, the reasons that people would buy an NFT are pretty straightforward, but um, we can talk about this a little bit later. There's a lot of reasons for this. This was one example of what I'm creating right now. I started creating even before bootcamp. I'm calling it Mentor Mask. Uh, it's basically a uh, platform to identify many key um, uh, creators in the market in a variety of different niches, uh, give people an opportunity to um, you know, deliver their business outcomes. And the way that we're gonna do that is by targeting creators like Grant with super fans, help them bring creators to the platform, invest in theirs, uh, create more, bring more fans onto the platform. And, you know, I could probably define what a super fan is for you, but we've only got limited time. A pinnacle example of this is Gary V's V friends. Um, I actually bought in early his brave bison for 0.6 ETH, which was like $1,700. I've got offers now for $60,000 on this. Uh, he's broken this up into a variety of different token types, admission, access, gifts, and scholarship. And if I look at the Cardone Enterprises, he could do the exact same thing. He could create a platform of his own called 10XT, 10X tokens, basically tokenize his entire environment. And I'm not right, just pitching this ask you some grant, questions, Steve. Using... So this is a world yeah. that, that you got some passion for. Biggie. Oh yeah, absolutely. I love NFTs and I love blockchains and specifically in the creator economy. A lot of my VC friends, they all talk about, yeah, there's these old bar, you know, SaaS companies and AI companies, which seem old bar, right? But there's a whole new creator economy that's coming forth. You're right. All these kids want to be YouTubers. All of these kids want to be singers. And there's a whole economy that is being built because these creators oftentimes have more reach than multinational companies on social media. Yeah. So they have to you know, invest in these creators to be able to make that happen. Steve, uh, as you're going through the presentation, what I was missing though was what is the exact problem that you want to solve? What is the problem that you've identified that uh, your solution would be able to fix? Yeah, so the problem is that many of these people who have left their traditional work environment are seeking an education on how how to grow, scale their own business, how to become a creator, how to make, take the next step uh, to get to where they want to be. How, you know, all of the people that attend these 10X boot camps come for one reason. They come to learn, they come to get access to grants, and they do that because they're trying to scale and grow or 10X their businesses. And 
in the current state of affairs right now, there are a lot of people that are entering this space and I'm consulting a lot of them through my existing business that are trying to go digital that just don't know how. Okay. So what's the product, Steve? Like, what's the product then? Is it, is it an educational platform to educate people on how to become creators? Um, is it going to be an NFT agency that goes and creates the NFT? What is the product? Yeah, so it'd be, it could be a variety of different, um, it could take a lot, variety of different shapes, but uh, my thought process is it could be, we could actually be uh, a platform for creating the tools um, through a SaaS-like environment, software as a service, um, I, I shared with you guys while we were at boot camp my experience at Salesforce. I know you guys are having conversations with uh, some of the innovation team over at Salesforce, but creating a clicks not code type of environment for creators to build their marketplaces online uh, and people to invest and buy in those projects. Have you gotten involved in the NFTs yet? Yeah, I'm lost. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like it's it's for me. I'm just like you, you know. I was trying to like figure out the connection between people not working and the platform, but I, like I don't even I don't understand the NFT thing. It doesn't resonate with me. I don't I don't get excited about it. Probably because I don't understand it. Uh, somebody bought this thing for a thousand and went to sixty thousand. I'm like, dude, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> but like, I have no, I have literally no idea where to start. Like the 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 concept of it, I have so much trouble wrapping my head around. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, yeah. like I, you know, and other people are like, oh, this is the future. This is the future. This is it. I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Like, but one thing too, Steve, for feedback and for everybody watching, we want you to learn as much as you're here to be entertained. When someone has five minutes to pitch, the key is that very quickly, you're gonna be able to show you're the right person with the right idea and the right market and the right business model. I think all three of us don't know what the product is. We, we, we know that there's an opportunity in the industry, right? We know that NFTs have like taken the world by storm. The creator economy is becoming the economy, partially COVID, partially just the evolution of Gen, Gen Z that is now wanting to become YouTubers instead of teachers. And that's, that's a fantastic statistic. What you want to do in a quick pitch is not share the statistics, but say, this is the problem, this is my solution to the problem, and listen, there's no one better than me to do this. There's no one better than me to bring this to life. So, Steve, thank you so much. In the chat, let us know, what are your thoughts on the presentation? Thanks, is this Steve. a product, is this a company that you get excited about, that you want to immerse yourself in? Is this something that you want to invest in? One of the things that we talk about often is how exciting it is to invest in early stage tech companies. You're literally going on the journey with someone, a journey what we call from napkin to exit. Now, one of our companies is called Carly.ai. Mm -hmm. This is a platform that, that is just changing the game. It's making Facebook productive again. Listen, who wants to be productive on Facebook? Because right now, the average person on Facebook, and you're probably one of those people, is in over 30 Facebook groups. Did you know that? over 30 Facebook groups, which means there are no Facebook groups. Because yeah. you can't monitor 30 Facebook groups. Yeah. So what we've done with Carly is we got approved by Facebook to integrate into the groups that you're in so that you can monitor, you can social listen, you can put in keywords and phrases that matter to you so that in real time, Carly tells you, guess what, chiropractor? There's someone in that local Facebook group that's looking for a chiropractor because their mm -hmm. child has an ear infection. And in real time, you can jump into that conversation. Speed to lead. That's what do you right. think about that, Jared? Lead, All right, take baby. a look at this commercial, Carly.ai. It's live, Carly.ai, check it out. Take a look at this commercial right now. Are you satisfied with your Facebook group? Let's ask that in a different way. As an admin, are you happy with your group engagement? As a group member, are you able to engage with the posts that matter most? Our guess? You probably answered, it could be better. Let's face it, Facebook is noisy, making it difficult for both admins and group members to navigate the chaos that is their newsfeed. The good news? Carly gets it. Imagine having someone who would sit in every Facebook group you're a part of and notify you in real time of every thread that was relevant to your specific needs. As a group admin, imagine having that same person notify your members of essential announcements you wanted the group to know about. That's where Carly comes in. Listen, go check it out, carly.ai. Grab yourself a free account and make Facebook productive again. Tiffany, let's get our next guest up here. So as our next guest is joining, I really wanna make sure that you, as someone watching this, that you have the courage to show up. 
maybe, just maybe, there's an idea that's sitting in your mind. Maybe it's sitting in your pocket. A lot of people write down their ideas, they put it in their wallet, and they think for some reason if it's in their wallet, it's going to somehow come to life. <laughs> it's not going to go anywhere unless you have the courage to pitch. This is a safe space. We show up with the desire to say yes. Build, scale, sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. We want to say yes to you. We just need you to say yes to yourself first. So up next, we have Andre Black. Andre, where are you calling in from today? Hi, Jared. How's Hello. How you doing, Andre? Hey, Andre, my man. Hey, how's it going? You okay? We are yeah, excellent. Yeah, where yeah. are you going? You're in the UK, man? Good stuff. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm well, from the UK, from London. Awesome. All right, Andre, what I want from you, I want you to sell us hard on why you're the right person with the right idea in the right market and the right business model. Andre, you got six minutes, my friend. Take it away. Okay. Hold on one moment. I like those glasses, Andre. Hey, thank you. They cost me a lot as well. Yeah, those are cool. <laughs> yeah, check out Warby Parker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those great are frames, great, great frames, great frames. <laughs> yeah, great <laughs> frames, great prices. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know. They look good on Eric, though. Those glasses, right? Yeah. Can Get some, you guys blue my pitch deck by any chance? We, yeah, we, we see it. We see Neptune, man. Go for it. Okay, let's go. Um, so Neptune, see both sides of the action. Neptune is a social media platform that enables users to activate the front and the rear facing camera simultaneously. Neptune is a new way for users to engage with content. It's also a new way for users to post content. It's a new way for creators to not, to not only create content, but actually get interactive when posting it online. We want our viewers, we want our users to immerse in both sides of the action. We want them to see not only what's being recorded, but also what's happening in the background so they don't actually miss, never miss a beat. The problem. Existing platforms don't allow users to activate both cameras simultaneously. So if you look at our TikToks, our Snapchats, our Instagram, you could either view what's happening in front of you or you can either view what's happening behind the camera. You don't have the ability to integrate both at the same time. The solution. The solution we find, using Neptune, users have the ability to share, capture both sides of the experience. So if I give you a quick example, um, at the, you're at the Super Bowl, it's the, fourth quarter, it's the fourth quarter, you've got 20 seconds left, your team's about to score a field goal to win. On existing platforms, you'd keep, you could either show what's happening, your team's about to kick a field goal, or you could see what's happening behind you. With Neptune, Nept Neptune eradicates that. It allows you to see your team being victorious and obviously them celebrating what they're doing and actually sells you behind the camera celebrating with your home team winning. So users watching online get to see what's get to see the action and get to see what's behind the camera. Um, which moves on to our last slide. So now this is where you find out how many chocolate bars you need to buy for a golden ticket. <laughs> so we're asking for a million pounds um, for 18 to 24 month runway. With that money, we plan on doing product development, market, which our end result is going to be early traction growth. And by that time, we should have a scalable product. Very good. Awesome. Concise to the point. Thank Andre, you. one question. Why are you the right person to do this, man? Why are you right for this? I'm the right person to do this because I've got, um, because studying the market, what I've seen is most apps, they just allow users to have a one-way stream of communication. I want users to, to never miss anything again, so I want them to see what's happening in front of them, behind them, and with you allowing me to create this platform, it allows me to bring joy to users online with Neptune. All right, picture this. Jake's on the soccer field, right? He's going, he's going in for the goal. You, you can capture yourself now, and Jake, you can commentate it. What are your thoughts, OD? What do you think? Yeah, Jake? I mean, I, I think the first thing that came to my head is I was like, huh, that's interesting. And then immediately I went to, how am I going to use that? Where am I going to use that? Like, you know, if I'm on, if I'm, if I'm uh, uh, going live on Facebook, like, is it interesting for people to look at the ground 10 feet in front of me while I'm walking? Like, the sports analogy, I think, is a great illustration of it. The question is, is it, is it something that's so powerful that it will, you know, you, it's a social platform, right? Yeah. So is that yeah. something that's so valuable to people that they will in addition to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, blah, 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 blah. Like they're gonna go, hey, this is the one. I think it's a very interesting idea for me. I just don't know if it's a broadly desired uh, uh, feature to where people are gonna be like, this is gonna change. You know, augmented reality is supposed to do that kind yeah, of stuff, yeah, like add yeah. all this crazy perspective. So I don't know, it, it just, it, it was interesting at first, but I don't think it's gonna be a grand slam home run. I would probably pass on it. Yeah, yeah. So what about you? So, so do you see that 
it's a utility that people pay for this and maybe we plug it into other social platforms as its own. What do you think? What do you think? So, I mean, so there's two things, right? So if it's a social platform, people don't have to pay, you can get advertisers. If it's a utility, people have to pay. And I, so one, I would challenge the thesis of it being a social platform at first for anything that anyone wants to build out there. If you want to build a social platform, what you really need to do is build a tool first because there's a Pareto distribution oh. on every social platform and we don't have to get into that right now. Now, if it's a tool, oh, cool. I would really want to understand what is that exact situation and who are those target customers who have that problem over and over and over again that we'd be able to target with even just a $5 a month subscription fee to be able to do that. Who are those exact people? What are they doing right now instead of using this platform? Speak into that, please. Go for it, Andre. Like who, who, who would you sell this to? Let's say, let's say you charge $5 a month. Who would you be selling this to? I think our target audiences are influencers because if we what you find is um, TikTok story you got the millennials on their side. So what we're aiming for is influencers that do like a lot of vlogging that post a lot of um, post a lot of content online. It just gives them another way for them to immerse with their viewers or their fans, if that kind of makes sense. So we're aiming to so that's one of the reasons why we need to do product development to see what people are using it for. They're using it for social media or they're just using it for the platform itself. Okay. Who would be the number one influencer you'd want on the platform? Like, who would accelerate this platform the fastest for you? I mean, I'll definitely go for Kylie Jenner. Cool. <laughs> because so she's, she's got, like, a massive following. And what I've seen her do online, whatever she does, is she just she basically creates um, content, if that makes sense. She could take a picture of coffee and says, okay, this is the best coffee in the world. Everyone's lining up at Starbucks tomorrow because they want whatever she's bought. So, so pretend, pretend, pretend that I'm her. Pretend that I'm her, Andre, and sell me on using this platform. Sell me right now. 30 I'm seconds. So Close me. Sorry, I didn't, sorry I, didn't hear you. I didn't hear your question, sorry. Pretend that I'm her and sell me on using this platform instead of Facebook or Instagram yeah. or TikTok. Sell me on using Neptune. 30 seconds. Sell me on using it. Neptune. So I'd say, okay, Kylie, listen, welcome to Neptune. I know you're getting bored of using existing platforms, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, whatever. This is a new way for you to be at one with your fans. This is a new way for you to post content online. So not only when you're posting, people can see what you're doing, but they can actually see your facial expression. You've got kids, so if you're posting on Neptune and you've got your daughter and she's doing something silly, so people can see your reaction to that in lifetimes and also what she's doing. Awesome. I think it's an uphill battle to be a social media platform. It's, a, it's an extremely yeah. red ocean. Um, I think I'm, I'm, a- I'm swaying more towards using it as a tool, but like I said, with product development, we can see what users branch towards more. Awesome. Andre, thank you so much for being here. Listen, for everybody that's watching this, would you use Neptune? And if you say yes, how do you see yourself using Neptune? Please share that in the comments. And if you wouldn't use Neptune, why not? Let, let, Let Andre know. This is an opportunity for him to get some great research done. One of the most common things we get asked is, what if I don't have an idea, but I want to get involved in Headache Incubator? What if there's an idea that I want to invest in? And we launched an opportunity called 10X Tech Angels, Mm -hmm. which is your opportunity to invest in the companies inside of 10X Mm -hmm. Incubator. It's really cool though, because it's a club, it's a community, it's a group of people that are accredited investors that want to get involved in early stage tech. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the greatest challenges that I've heard from other people that are accredited is that they can't find deal flow. They just can't find it. Like if you're not in Silicon Valley, like you just don't know about tech companies until they launch, until you're paying a subscription to use them. You're already, is when you find already, out. You already missed the you already missed the boat. You missed yeah. the boat. Like yeah. Joe Montana put in a hundred thousand dollars into GitLab before it was anything. It was it was like an idea on paper, and he made a hundred and forty, right? A hundred and forty. I think it's about a hundred forty. I, I know for a fact Uber, a twenty thousand dollar investment is a hundred and twenty million dollars. These yeah. are these. But that's private equity, glad hand in, good friends. You're in the circle. You get exactly. The, you know, I think I think the the wild thing here is that we're, you know, number one, if 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 we're gonna say yes to it. Yeah. then that means that we see some potential. And just look at what we've done with our own business and see what, what we do. What we do is we help blow businesses up. Yeah. We've got a proven track record of this. So we see an idea that we love, that we say yes to. We have our acumen to blow on things and help them blow up. We teach people skills so that they can grow and develop. I mean, like, and you're going to have a first, first look access at these deals. Like our, our bigger, broader goal uh, is to have a big, huge community, a big, huge family. That's the most important thing to grant. I want to create a community that around the world you can go, you can wear 10X and people are like, hey, we're, we're in the same yeah. family. Yeah. And so for us, 
finding people in that group that we can not only build with, not only that we can grow with, but we can get rich with yeah. is really important. And, um, and I think that this, this Tech Angels um, group is gonna be a very dynamic group, great opportunity to connect and network with people that are totally. highly connected and highly uh, interested in, in these types of things. Great, great group of people and more than anything, you get to look at the deals Grant's partnering in before anybody else gets to see him. Yeah, so. if you want to go on the journey with us, take a look at this commercial and then head over to 10xtechangels.com. All right, Johnny, please take it away. What if you knew about Instagram or Slack or Clubhouse when the company was raising a friends and family round at $10,000 per person? What if you were able to see all the tech companies that Grant Cardone and Jared Yellen have co-founded in one place and invest in any that excites you? What if you were able to expand your portfolio into early stage tech companies with extraordinary founders and teams? 10X Tech Angels is the most unique investment club that you will ever find because not only will you see some of the most innovative tech companies at the lowest valuations ever, but you will also be educated on how to pick tech winners, meet other members of our community, and experience the excitement associated with taking an early idea to exit. Become one of the founding members of 10X Tech Angels for an exclusive offer with some extraordinary bonuses. To learn more, visit 10xtechangels.com. What if you knew about... All right, 10xtechangels.com. We invite you to come on the journey. I mean, getting involved in an early stage tech company, you get to know the founder, you get to know the team, you get to influence the platform. We have investors across all of the companies and some of them are really passive. Like they, they, they just put their money in and they're just watching and others, they get more involved yeah. and we welcome their feedback. So if that's exciting for you, we'd love for you to join us, 10xtechangels.com. All right, let's bring up our final pitch for the day. So. We are pumped, and we're pumped because when we were offset talking during that commercial, Jared thought of a way to position Neptune. And it was different than how Andre did. And I'm bringing this up because it's so important that you, as the person with the idea, can sell your idea better than anyone else in the world. It's just so important. When Grant and I sat down, he knew there was no one else in the world that could sell 10X incubator better than me, which is why he's like, Jared, let's do this deal together. Mm -hmm. Like I have the audience, you can, you have the message, you have the infrastructure. I'm sharing this because there's gonna be a moment where you're gonna come up and up here. You're gonna come on the, you're gonna be in the tank with us. And I just wanna make sure that you're ready. Sell us, why are you the right person? Why is it the right idea? Why is it the right market? And why is it the right business model? All right, we have Brandon Rhodes in the house. How are you, Brandon? Where are you calling in from? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm calling in from Florida today. Awesome. awesome. Great stuff. home state. All right. Here we go, Brandon. You got six yeah. minutes, my friend. Sell us on why you're the right person. Why is it the yeah. right idea? Why is it the right market? And why is it the right business model? Take it away. Okay, great. Yeah, let me share my screen for you. I'll get right into it, okay? Go for it. Okay, yeah, hopefully you can see my screen. You hear me pretty good. We don't see your screen. We don't see yet. your we screen. still see you. Okay, great. Do you need to see me? Yeah. We see you. We don't see the screen. Yeah, if you're sharing your screen, it's not sharing yet. Okay, hang on one second for me, okay? Sorry about that. So why is Brandon sharing? Oh, there we go. Good stuff, man. You're there sharing your Zoom screen. There you go. All right, good. I'm excited to be here and uh, introduce Young Fox to you today. And the reason I'm introducing it to you is because Young Fox is taming the wild west of food delivery. And I'm sure many of you watching and you here on the panel today have had a chance to order food delivery at one time. I know I have. I live a busy life and I'm sure many people do today. But here's the problem. When you go to order food delivery, uh, your screen might look like this. And whether you're at home or maybe you're at some friend's house or maybe you find yourself in a new city or a new hotel and you want food delivered, the problem I was facing was I would have to get my phone out and I would look at it and I would search all these different delivery apps to try to find the best price, the best deal for me. And it was super frustrating for me and it was super inconvenient. And I'm sure many people can relate to this. And I'm sure if I had to guess, several people already have two or three of these on their phone right now. Well, the Young Fox solution is super simple. Okay, we save you and solve this inconvenience. Okay, the Young Fox solution 
here is that we centralize all these food delivery apps into a marketplace or a hub that we like to call the food den. Now the food den centralizes all these places so you don't have to worry about searching all these multiple apps to get the best deal for you. We save you that time from doing that and we get rid of these apps on your phone saving you some space. And most importantly, it's super convenient for you. Okay, now the food den is a place where you don't have to remember who delivers from where. This is why this is exciting because you can go on here and you can look at all the different restaurants that are in a preset location that are around you and you can choose the restaurant you love regardless of who delivers the food. Now, you gotta understand, Young Fox is not a food delivery app, okay? It's more of a food ordering app that delivers a big promise and a big solution to you. So you, the user, win every single time. Now, one way we're taming the Wild West, you can see here is that we give the users the ability to compare the pricing of all the delivery companies that are selected when you choose your restaurant. And this is a game changer for us. And while we do this and to increase and drive revenues and, and build on a robust monetization uh, model that we have, we're going to introduce convenient uh, marketing fees. We might uh, introduce monthly subscriptions for our users to take care of exciting perks that we might have. We're also going to want to par uh, partnership with third party companies that are doing this um, delivery for us. They'll have the ability to go on this dashboard and come in and put together coupons or whatever they want like to do. Now, the exciting part about this is when I started this process, I was actually at a restaurant and I noticed this lady standing there at this counter with this computer screen in front of her with like six tablets laid out on the counter. So I went up to her and I said, hey, what exactly are you doing? What's your job here? And she said, well, they've hired me to scan these tablets to see all the incoming food delivery orders. And I said, wow, that's actually uh, pretty crazy. Did do any of these orders just come directly on one on one computer? And she said, no, unfortunately, we have to have a tablet for each one. So not only can we make it convenient for you as a user ordering food delivery, but we can also on the back end have software that creates it uh, super simple for the restaurants to also uh, make it convenient for them in one location. We're gonna unify all those onto one uh, location for the restaurants as well. And when we're doing all this, we're obviously gonna create a lot of data which can be sold to the restaurants so they can increase their cost of goods sold too. But here's the exciting part. And this is why, this is where I get really excited because the food market right now in the delivery <coughs> space has just surpassed $51 billion. Now that might not sound like a lot, but it is, it's a lot. Now 70% of people in America right now order food delivery at least once a week. And just since 2019, this market has grown $28 billion. 10% of people right now are ordering some type of delivery service. And this will allow Yum Fox to pivot and grow. We can add things such as comparative grocery shopping or maybe consumable products like Instacart or Shipt. Our platform <laughs> will be able to do that as we grow. Now, the age group that we target is 18 to 29. That's our first age group. And 63% of that age group right there are ordering food delivery at least once a week. You can see this chart right here will show you that Young Fox, as we grow, will have plenty of users. And I believe this is why Young Fox will be successful because we're paving the way right now for what the market is craving, a simple, fresh, easy way to order food delivery in one location. And while we do that, we're gonna emerge as the next billion dollar app on the food delivery space right now. Now, in order to build a platform like this, we have to have a solid foundation. Okay, and this is where the true magic begins for Young Fox, because we're a giving company. We want to give back. If it wasn't for our users, our restaurants, or our food delivery companies that partner with us, we wouldn't be or have what we're going to have. So when you place an order on the Young Fox system, you're going to have the ability to round that up to the next dollar amount, and that's going to drive big change because the users are now going to be able to track their social impact. They're going to be able to see where this money that they've donated goes. We're gonna partner with third party uh, micro entrepreneurship programs. So our users will be able to engage and even invest some of that change themselves into these programs. Because <coughs> the pause movement today 
is where we want to take a second, we want to pause life, and we want to celebrate our users, our restaurants, and our delivery companies. And I think that's going to be a huge difference right there. And that's why I'm inviting you today to join what we're doing at Young Fox and be a part of building something special. Uh, that's what I have today. My name is Brandon Rose. I appreciate uh, you letting me uh, pitch today. Thank you. Awesome, Brandon. Thank you, my friend. Great job. Keep it concise. Aaron, what you got for us? So uh, have you checked out the competitive landscape for this product? Have you seen anybody out there that's slightly competitive or doing anything like you're doing? Yeah, you know, there's no direct competition. There was a few companies that started something uh, a few years ago. I haven't seen much traction from them. Um, but if you're referring maybe to like some of the delivery companies that are out there right now, um, I haven't seen them doing anything because uh, our model would essentially, uh, if they try to copy us or duplicate us, they would essentially be competing with themselves. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm more referring, there's the a app called MealMe. I think their domain is mealme.ai. Um, have yeah. you ever seen them on the marketplace before? Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen Minifly. Uh, I've also seen a thing called Food Boss. Yeah, I've so checked them out. So what's the differentiation between Yum Fox and MealMe? Well, I think what MealMe does, and, and, and I think what MenuFly does, is they have an algorithm in the back that, that allows you to choose, uh, it chooses some of, the, some of the delivery companies for you. I don't think it gives you the right to choose whichever one you want, regardless of who delivers. I think that's the big difference. Yeah, and they choose the one for you based on the discount, right? Which is going to be what mm -hmm. you want to choose anyway, the, the cheapest yeah. one from the same restaurant. So is, is that also what you're doing, and, and what's that differentiator? Yeah, so what we're doing is uh, when you come on the Young Fox platform, uh, you get to scroll down on all the restaurants that you want to see, regardless of who delivers the, the food. Now, it's not based on a discount. I'm not discounting anything. Young Fox is not discounting because I'm not a discounted website. What I'm doing is simply giving the user the power to choose what's best for them. And if you don't realize this, but these food delivery companies, they'll uh, increase the menu prices. They'll retail each individual menu price, and they'll also gauge that delivery on where you are to that restaurant. So if you're not aware of this, you're spending time going back and forth between all these delivery companies, maybe even uh, menu me. So what we do is we give you the opportunity to see it all across the board, and it puts the user in the driver's seat to win every time on, on for their wallet. But you had a subscription model built in. Who's paying the subscription, and what are they getting for the subscription, and what do you envision the price point being? Yeah, I think that I envision uh, people coming on and, and being uh, subscribers to the platform where they'll get certain perks, they'll be able to see uh, certain uh, coupons they might not be able to see um, if they're just a free user on the on the site. So I think the price point from there, uh, I think could easily be around maybe five ninety nine to seven ninety nine a month. Got it. So go to market is everything, right? Promotion. So I'm mm -hmm. sure it's on your mind. Like, how does this get to market? Like, how do we? I mean, it's just a big. It's a big space, you know. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a it's a big lift. You're competing against multi billion dollar companies. Um, these problems that you're talking about, like, is it is a mm -hmm. user for these? Like, I I looked at that screen and I go, oh yeah, I've got I've got Postmates, I've got <laughs> Uber Eats, I've got Grubhub, I've got Delivery Dudes, like I've got all these sure. different deals on me. And so when you say, oh wow, there's a way to get them all on one page and then have them compete against each other for your business, I think mm -hmm. that idea is a great idea. I think the question is, is it different enough from something that's already existing and out there um, to, to, to make a move on? And so yeah. you know, you're always looking for uh, a handful of things. You're looking for the idea, you're looking for the, the, lands, the competitive landscape, you're looking for the, the person. Like you're trying to figure out like, are, is this the right combination of all these things? And for me, I think the, the competition is the big question mark for me that I don't, I, I don't know about. Um, it, but, but you are, you know, you're, you're gonna go to battle against the big boys. Yeah, yeah, so, so speak into that. How do you go to market? Like how do you start getting market share? Yeah, sure. So I think uh, one thing that we can do is, um, I I've thought a lot about this and getting to market fast is actually gonna be essential for us, uh, partnering with, with the right team to do that. But right now, the millennial age group and some people uh, just a little bit older than that, uh, and some unconventional platforms that we can market on, I think will really be key too. Um, now, I've heard you say this a lot of times, within a million dollar idea, there's a billion dollar idea. So for us, what we wanna do as this market grows and evolves, we wanna be in a position to pivot and do the same thing. 
Now, one of the niche markets that I think that we can enter into to really get a hold on this would be the gaming uh, console market because uh, getting it out there while gamers can engage in our platform in exciting new ways uh, on all these streaming services would be very valuable to go to market. We could also reach out to budgeting apps, uh, community driven apps and stuff like that, meetup apps and stuff like that. So I think looking more unconventional than conventional would be a huge benefit for us going to market. We're awesome, Brandon. Brandon, thank you so much for showing up today. Everyone great that's watching, yeah, yeah, really great. Kept mm -hmm. it tight. You got delivered a lot of information in five minutes. Not easy to do. So for all of you watching, will you be using Yum Fox? Let's give Brandon some feedback. Let's give him some love. Let's also let's let's critique. Listen, Brandon wants to ensure that when Yum Fox gets brought to market, it's the right product. Listen, all of you that presented today, we want to acknowledge you. It's definitely not easy to come into the tank and to share your idea. You got five minutes. Like five minutes is quick, right? It, go, it flies and, and we ask questions and you respond to those questions. We applaud you. And for those that are here watching, we invite you. Mm -hmm. Don't just be a spectator. We have a thesis, which is everyone's meant to be a tech entrepreneur. I'm not technical, but I have a tech company that I've been able to build and scale. None of us are technical, yeah. and we're going to build, scale, and sell 10,000 tech companies in 10 years. This is not to hype you up. This is to give you a path for you to realize your dreams and your aspirations and to become that change maker entrepreneur that we know lives within you. So make sure that you pitch us. Head over to 10xincubator.com and submit your idea. And when you submit your idea, if we see something in it, you'll get a chance to be on the tank with this crew right here. We thank you for your time today. We're excited to work with you. And as we always say, together we achieve more. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.